I am starting a new two-part series on wet felting and needle felting. We're going to make a vessel or pot or pod or whatever you want to call it. You could also turn this into a hat if you wanted to, but I'm going to go through the process of making the vessel in this video and then in my next video I'll show how to needle felt a design onto that piece. So let's get started felting the vessel. Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Brittany and today I have a wet felting project to do together. This is kind of a tutorial, kind of a work with me. I have a piece of lace fabric that has lots of meshy holes in it, a piece of foam fabric in a circle that I'm going to use as a resist or the thing that I felt around to create a shape, a piece of bubble wrap, a bamboo mat, a piece of window screening, a bin of cold water, and some hot water in my tea kettle over here. I did not bring this to a full boil because I don't want to burn myself, but I did bring it to about 180 degrees because that's going to cool down as I am working before I can get to it. And I wanted to have hot water handy when I get to the hot water step in my project. I also have a towel down on my workspace to catch all of the drips and an extra towel handy just in case. A wooden dowel for working the felt and then a collection of fiber here. I have some wool bats and then this collection of colors is alpaca hair. I will be pulling this in for designs and this will be the structure of my piece. To get this project started, I'm going to put my mesh, my window screening, down first and set the rest of this aside. These are really just assists for the process not necessarily something I'm for sure going to use. Okay, window screening down and then my resist down. And I'm going to be covering this about three quarters of the circle up and then covering both sides so we have an opening on one end and the rest is enclosed. Now, when you are wet felting, what you're doing is taking friction from your hands, soap, which adds friction or helps the fibers slide against each other and water in cold and hot temperatures to start to shock the fibers and start to tangle them together. Wool fibers have uh, scales on them and as you heat them it opens the scales and then as they get uh, splashed by cold water or rubbed together the scales start to rub against each other and get closer and closer and so you end up with a piece that ends up being about 30 to 50 percent smaller than the amount of size that you started with. For my piece here, I'm going to take my wool bat and fluff out. Now before you get started, I suggest playing around with fluffing out bits of fiber, pulling out tufts so you have nice loose, loose tufts here and just practice this motion so that the fibers slide against each other. If you're pulling really hard, if the fibers are long and you have a, a long staple length, then it's going to be hard to pull them apart. Here, what I did was just create these little tufts and now I'm going to place these at the, the three quarter line on my circle so that I have three quarters of my circle here. And I'm gently, just slightly overlapping these pieces and laying them so that all the fibers are going straight up and down in a line. So now I'll come in and if I have any weak spots or spots where I can see the black resist through, I will fill that in. So I'm going to layer this wool up on top of itself, kind of shingling it so that the edges match up on the row previous and the piece next to it. And I'm overlapping the edges of this circle just a bit so that there's some overhang so that I can fold that to the other side. Okay, so that is layer one. Now I'm going to go over it and I'm going to pull the fibers and lay them so that instead of going up and down like I did for that first layer, I'm laying them so that the hairs go horizontally in front of me, right on top of what I previously laid down.
right up to the bottom. Don't forget that last small row at the bottom here. Layer it like so. And now you can do this with a sponge or with your hand. I'm going to sprinkle some of the warm water over the surface. So I'll pour some warm water in my bin here. If you heated the warm water in your kettle, make sure to just ensure that it's not boiling or super hot before you touch it. I'm gonna sprinkle some water over the surface of my piece, like so and then press the water into the fibers. I want to press it through the layers to get all of the fibers wet. Before I go any further, I'll lay a piece of bubble wrap underneath my mesh piece so that it catches the water because I don't want all of that water getting soaked up by the towel. I do want it soaked into the fibers here. So now, I'm going to gently flip this piece over, lay it back on the mesh, and then the edges I'm going to bring in and tuft right along the edge of my resist. So you can use water here to place this down, kind of like glue to tack it in place. now we're going to do the same thing to this side that we did with the other side. So dry your hands off really well because if your hands are wet, they really um, cause the fiber to stick to your hands and make it difficult to do what you're trying to do. So again, on this side, run the fiber along vertically, meeting that same place on your resist piece. And all of the tools and materials are listed in the description below, so be sure to check the links out down there for all of that information. I also have a blog post about the different types of wools you can use for wet felting and the types of felt or the surface of felt that those wools create. I'll link that in the description below as well. Again, don't forget that bottom edge. It's easy to miss this lower section because it kind of blends in or disappears and you think you've gotten far enough down, but this will be the base of our vessel. And so you want enough down there so that you don't end up with any holes. And now I'm going to lay pieces horizontally. So I'm crisscrossing fibers or cross hatching, as you would say in drawing so that I end up turning the fibers and having the hairs of the fiber go in different directions so that they are more likely to tangle and felt more effectively. Again, catch that lower half. Maybe do a fan shape along the bottom here. Fill in any weak spots that you see or spots where the wool didn't end up very thick. And now do the same thing with the sponge or the, your hands. Sprinkle water onto your piece and press the water into the fibers and through the fibers. Now flip the piece over once again. We'll do the same thing, one more layer on each side. So fluff over the edge pieces from that second side to the first side here. Press the water through those layers. And now I'm working with a dark resist and a dark fiber here. So I don't know if you can see my line very well, but I have a line right along here where the top of my piece hits the resist. So that edge, I want to try to meet with another layer of fiber. And this layer, I'm going to overlap the edges just a bit. So on these edges, just overlap slightly on this side. On, when we go to the other side, we're going to keep the wool within the walls of the resist or the edges of the resist. 
And the reason we're doing so many layers is to make sure that our foundation for this vessel is nice and sturdy and nice and thick. It may look like a mound of wool, but once you send the water over it and compact it, press it down, it can cause the fibers to um, kind of loosen out and really shows where there are thinner spots and thicker spots. You're pressing the air out of the fiber by doing by adding water and, and soap and then um, it's kind of come back compacting it down so you really see those loose spots and we want to fill those with fiber so we do lots of layers and that means that we can layer the fibers in different directions which helps the felting process as well and in the other direction this one's going to be a fairly thin layer And then add some more water. Press it through the layers. I'm going to lay this lace on top and press down through the lace so that the wool doesn't lift up on my hands. The nice thing about using the lace is that because it's a mesh, the water will come through. So then I'll lift this up, set it down, and use this edge to fold the wool over. Catch these edges. work them into the fabric on this side. Like so. And now on this side, I'm going to wipe my hands off again because they're wet and I need to work with the wool. But on this side, I'm going to do another layer but stay within the curved edge. So I'm trying to not overlap as much, staying within that edge. So our edges are nice and dense. We're not going to fold over the edges on this side as much. If a little bit overlaps, that's totally fine. You can fold it over, but we don't want to intentionally put as much layer to fold over. And now in the opposite direction, or horizontally. And I'm moving pretty quickly here. You want to take this, uh, do this carefully so that your layers end up evenly laid out. So take your time if you want to make sure that each tuft is, is even, you can take the time to do that and lay it in carefully. So I end up with a nice mound of wool here and I'm going to press it down and try to get it wet. And again, putting something on top before pressing will definitely help it from sticking to your hands. So there's a lot of water on my surface, so I'm going to try to use that water to press through this wool here and then gently lift up the bubble wrap. Sprinkle more water in place. Press that water in. And now I'm using olive oil bar soap. So I'm going to get that wet, work up some suds, press that into the surface of the wool as well. And you can flip this guy over, add some soap to this other side. I'll lay another piece of lace on top here 
and then I can rub the soap over the lace and it will go through to the wool without causing problems to the wool. So now I'm gonna go over and with this lace on top, just gently rub over the surface, running my hand along the rounded curved edge, lower portion where the edges of the vessel are, and then rotating in a circular motion. Just gently, don't press too hard, work in that soap into the layers of the wool and lift up the lace at a sharp angle and then gently just press into the wool fiber with your hands like so catch any edges that have fallen off curve them around now lift up this leg put this lace piece back on top and then flip over to the opposite side and get some soap in on this side. And then rub and press here as well. Now I'm going to change out the lace for a piece of bubble wrap with the bubble side down and rub over the surface. If it's not rubbing easily, rub some soap over the surface so you can roll your hands across it easily. I'm just gently moving over in circular motions around the top of my piece. And because we have lace on the bottom and then the mesh under that, and bubble wrap under that, we have lots of layers of friction. So as we press down on top here, the bubble wrap on this top layer is working to felt the piece that we're, or the side that we're actually working on. And then underneath all those layers of um, rough materials are just slightly felting the bottom side as well. So we're able to felt both sides of this piece at the same time by having those layers in place. And this takes quite a bit of time, so just work away at it. You'll spend about 10 minutes, five on each side, going over it with the bubble wrap like this, just to make sure that the base felt is solid and it's not going to come loose on you as we get ready to use the dowel to roll it. So once you've done one side, go ahead and flip it over and do the other side in the same way making sure to catch the edges on this side as well. When your piece feels fairly solid, like the wool, is it gonna come loose on you? You can take it, make sure that your opening lifts off. I'm going to fold this over just a little bit so I have a nice edge on both sides. And run some more soap over your piece. Add water if you need to. I'm gonna rub it just straight onto the felt with my hands here. And flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And then flipping back and forth a little bit. 
making sure to catch the edges, rubbing up against the edges there along the curve. Okay, and then with the lace and my mesh window screening, I'm going to roll this up over, so I'll fold over the edge, and then roll this up over the dowel. You can squeeze out some of the excess water into your water bin. And then on this bubble wrap, I'm just going to gently roll back and forth, rotating every couple shifts. So we'll do 10 rocks back and forth and then rotate a quarter turn, 10 rocks back and forth. And if your piece gets a little bit loose, open it up again, re-roll it. And I have rolled it up so that the I'm rolling from the side here, rather than top to bottom, I'm rolling side to side. And you can squeeze back and forth, rotate, roll 10 times, Rotate two times. <laughs> and then I'll open this up, flip it over. Do the same thing from the other side. Folding here, pull this up in my dowel, nice and tight, and then roll. Open it up. And now your piece should be starting to shrink smaller than your resist. So it's starting to pull the resist in. So I'm going to lay this out flat and then remove my resist. And because I'm using kind of a foamy piece, I'm gonna have to tug this out a little bit because some of the fibers get caught in this foam. So and then you can rinse out your resist and dry it out for another use. And this guy, I'm going to turn inside out. So I've been felting the outside. I'm going to turn this inside out because the inside has not gotten quite as felted as the outside has. So now I'll lay this inside out on my surface. Once again, roll up the edge and then roll this onto my dowel and do the same process from the inside or doing the inside. So 10 shifts and rotate a quarter to turn, 10. Rotate a quarter to turn. You end up doing four sets of 10 before opening it up. Now we will flip it around on the other side and roll from the other direction. Now we're going to open this up and with some more soap and water, run our hand right along the seam or the, there isn't a seam, but the curve where we curved around the resist because we kind of want to stretch that out and make sure that that is also nice and felted. So you can dip it in the water 
get it nice and soapy. And then come in from the inside and rub along that curve. Rub it from the outside. Make sure you hit the bottom as well. Come in with some bubble wrap. Now I'm just doing the whole surface of the inside of my vessel. Now we'll do some dips and squeezes. So dip it in your water. Squeeze that out. Dip it and squeeze. Kind of scrunch it. Try to keep all the water in your water, then not squirting out everywhere. Now, I'm going to pour some more hot water. Again, make sure it's not too hot before you totally dunk your hands in it. And we're gonna dip it in the hot water, squeeze the fibers, dip it, add some soap to the water, and the piece, we're not rinsing yet, we're still doing the felting. And now, after warm water, set that aside and stick it back in the cold water. And this is going to shock the fibers and cause those little burrs or scales to pull closer together and kind of close up. So we're dipping and squeezing here as well. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this Right side out again. All of that was from the inside. And now I could make a little baby cap, pull on this and make a brim, stretch it out, or start to form a vessel by creating a bottom. I'm felting the side some more to get it to stand upright. Now I'm gonna move all of this messiness aside and just slap it down off to my work surface. Squeeze out some of the bubbles. And by rotating around the rim with my hand and hitting each side, what I'm able to do is start to stretch out the shape. If you want more of a bowl shape, like this. You can also come in and re-stretch it out, make it more of a taller vessel. So don't stretch it out too much or you won't be able to get your shape back if you want a taller piece. You can come in and play around with the overall shape here.
rub it against the bubble wrap right along the bottom to create the bottom of your piece. This would be such a cute little bucket hat. It's a little bit too small for me though. So I've created the bottom of my vessel now by rubbing from the inside and creating a nice edge along there. If you want to play around with your edge and flute it out, you can work on that. Set it down and rub the edges so that they flute out if you want that. I want mine to come kind of straight up to create a little basket or vase sort of shape like this. So now that my felt is nice and thick and firm, I have created a bottom to my vase. I'm now ready to rinse out all of the soap and then I'm going to soak this in vinegar water for 15 minutes while I get cleaned up. To create your rinse bath, add one cup of white distilled vinegar to a pot of warm water. This is enough water to cover your felted piece. Allow it to sit for 15 minutes. The reason we do this is to room, remove all soap suds, but also resets the pH level to a happy place for the wool. Thanks for joining me to work on this beginning of the felting project, getting the vessel made. Be sure to come back next week for the needle felting aspect of this project. We'll be decorating our little pot or hat or whatever you ended up with. And um, I'll link that in the description below as soon as it comes out. So check on that. Um, you can also check out my website, textileindy.com. I have more information on wet felting and resources there. You can find that in the description below. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye.